Welcome back everyone to another video editing tutorial in Premiere. Uh, today, uh, by special request, I'm going to be going over how I make my images scroll in my photography videos. Okay, so to start this off, I've got a little test project opened in Premiere, and uh, so there are two different types of images I use. I use either a 4-3 comp composition or a 16-9 composition. One is a portrait orientation and the other is a landscape orientation. So to start this off, first I'm going to start out with the portrait orientation. So in my photography videos, I always add two copies of every image. Because, you know, I just kind of like how that works out. And I am going to do this in the Effects tab so that I can have access to everything I need. And always, when you're moving images around, make sure you have Effects Control selected so that you can actually edit settings. Then I'm going to click my first image. And for my first image, I... I'm going to place the blue bar in the timeline window just to make sure that the image is displayed in the preview window. Then up in the effects controls area, from this point on, I'm going to be moving the blue bar around in here. And as you'll notice as I move this, uh, the blue bar uh, it represents the actual time code or of the position in the video. So when it comes to time code, it is hours, minutes, seconds, and then frames. So to start things off, I'm going to move the blue bar all the way back to the beginning of this image. And then I am going to adjust to the scale of my image, because I am not sure that this is actually, you know, at the width of the window. You have two options clicking these numbers. Either you can click once and drag to the right or left to zoom in and out with your image, or you can use the air, the up and down arrow keys once you're clicked in to adjust this and kind of fine tune it. For the portrait orientation images, I always make sure they are the width of the video frame. So I always be precise and make sure it fills it completely just using one arrow key at a time. For this image, it works out really nice because it's luckily 100%. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to click this uh, little stopwatch icon by scale, and that is going to create me a keyframe right over here. And that means that when the blue bar is in this position, this will be the scale of the image. Then the next thing I want to do is adjust the position of the image. So. There's two numbers after position. The first one is horizontal and the second one is vertical. For my portrait orientation images, I, I like to start with the vertical position so that the bottom of the image is at the bottom of the screen. So over here, I want to get rid of this little black space down here, but just barely. So again, clicking in here, I can use the arrow keys and move this, and I am just going to do it one button at a time and be really precise about it. The closer I get to the bottom, the slower I go. And there we go. That just barely went to the edge and has, this is the bottom of my image. So with that being in position, I am then going to hit the stopwatch button by position to create a keyframe for position right there. After that is done, we officially have this position and zoom locked in. So then I'm going to take this blue bar and move it over to the end of my image. But as you'll notice, it kind of went off the screen a little bit and something I'm not 100% sure why, but I at this point I always use the left arrow key and click the left arrow key on the keyboard one time to bring it back just one frame. And now that I am back this one frame, I am at the true end of the image. So when these uh, keyframe uh, animate, or icons are turned blue, that means you have keyframes enabled on the line. 
So when that is the case, you can click over here to add or remove a keyframe in this little circle. So I'm going to press that to create a scale keyframe because I don't want to change the scale of it. But I do want to change the vertical position. So I'm going to click in here and drag this image up so that the top of the image is at the top of my window. Then I'm going to click in here since I got it close and I am going to just bring it back up very slowly until it is officially where I want it. There we go. We officially have it in position. So I'm going to press enter and that will create me a second keyframe right there. So now, as you'll notice, as I move the blue bar, it scales between the two points of keyframes. Uh, and just for the sake of showing this, I, in, if I were to, in the middle of the image, say, you know, let's make it really tiny and over to that side, then I'm going to drag the blue bar back and as you'll notice it goes to that keyframe which is that position and then it's going to come to the second position. Not that that's actually what I want but that is just demonstrating how keyframes actually work. So the position and scale is locked in at each keyframe and as you play the image it will scroll through them. Just like that. Okay, but I am going to delete these keyframes because that's not what I actually want in there. Okay, so now that I have the first image done, because uh, it's just going to scroll like that, which is what I want. So then I'm going to use click and drag to create a box to highlight these two keyframes. I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy those keyframes. And then I'm going on the actual timeline, I'm going to select my next image. Then I'm going to make sure the blue bar is actually on this image and drag it back to the beginning. So to start this off, I want the image to start where it was at the end of the last image. So I'm going to paste those last keyframes so that between the two images, it just if I weren't to add any more, it would just stay exactly where it left off. Okay, but then next. Uh, so I need to look at my time code now, and I'm currently at 19 seconds, 29 frames. So I want to skip forward one second in time. So using the arrow keys, I'm going to use the right arrow key to move ahead frames until I'm at 20 seconds and 29 frames. So 20 seconds and 29 frames, there we go. Now that I have my blue bar in the position that I want it one second after those keyframes, I, I am going to reset the parameter to create two new keyframes at the defaults and then it just gives me a clean, fresh place to start working on those keyframes. So for the scale, again, I'm gonna click in there and use the arrow keys, and I'm going to shrink this until it is sized exactly like that, because personally, that's what I like. And then press Enter to lock it in. So for the position, normally I just click and drag, and I slide this to the right. And I try really hard to center it between this line and the edge, leaving an even amount of black space on both. So with that being done, I am happy with the position of that image. Now the only last thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to switch over to my graphics window. And I've got a graphics template that I use. And uh, this is for details on how I actually took a picture. So I'm just going to click and drag it above the second image and then that leaves uh, so now I've got text in displaying like how I took the picture and the picture displayed so it is very good. So then if I come back to the beginning I can just hit the play button and here we go. So we have the first image it scrolls from the bottom of the image up to the top of the image 
And then we get to the second one, and it very quickly moves it over there and shoots this text up on the screen. And that is the end of the displayed image. So I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions about how to move or reposition images, be sure to leave them in the comment section and I will try to answer them if possible. But I am going to actually continue this tutorial on because I still have one more image I want to do. This is my landscape orientation images. So again, they start out very similar. I always copy two of them in and then place the blue bar over the first one and select it. Then for these, the, there is a couple differences to how I do it. So I start off by moving all the way to the end of the image and then using the arrow key to come back one frame. And that gets me positioned where I want it. Then for scale, I, I click in there and I use the arrow keys and I make sure that this completely fills the preview window. So right there, it looks like 94% is the magical number. Then I'm going to create keyframes for both position and scale there. Then I'm going to move it back to the beginning of the image. And so I've got 94% so, er, for my scale. So I want to move this up. I normally do... I think it's 10. I change it 10% normally, so I'm going to change this to 104%. And that's actually not that much. Uh, I can do 110%. That looks like a happy amount to move it. So then I'm going to press enter and it locks me in a keyframe at the beginning. Uh, but the one thing to know, uh, if you are using scale keyframes and changing the scale, you need to have two different position keyframes in there or else it will not adjust the scale. So I, when I'm doing a zoom out on an image, I, I always make sure to adjust this and kind of choose what I want the center of my image to actually look like where it starts off. And I think I want it to be about there. And actually, let's, let's come... So this is just purely personal preference. I like it there, so I made a keyframe with it in that exact position. Just remember, you can't use the same position as that ending keyframe. You need to modify each one of these numbers by at least one and create another keyframe. So now if I hit the play button, the sh image should zoom out really slowly so that you can see the full picture. And that looks like it worked out. So then similar to how I did my other ones with the landscape orientation images, I'm going to uh, draw the box and copy those keyframes and click to my next image. Then I'm going to move that all the way back to the beginning and paste my keyframes again so that, again, it starts exactly where the last image left off. And then next up, same as before, we got the time code. That's 39 seconds tw or 27 frames. So need to increase that by one second. So I'm going to 40 seconds, 27 frames. So using the right arrow key, I'm going to get us to 40 seconds and 27 frames. Then same as before, I'm going to reset both parameters to create new keyframes and give me just that fresh starting spot. So then scale, I'm going to shrink it. And this is very similar to how I do the other ones, uh, but the only difference is it's obviously landscape instead of portrait, so it kinda takes a little bit more finesse to get it in right. And I think I want it looking like that because, again, I don't want it to cross the center line, but I and I also don't want it to cross off the screen over here. So with that being done, I've got my two keyframes for that. And then I'm going to copy this on top and add my text in for those images. So now if I am to play this, it scroll, it zooms out on the image starting at some point and then 
When it gets fully zoomed out, it will take one second to bring it down over here while it's putting the text up. Uh, so, yeah, and then for images, I always add a transition at the beginning and a transition at the end. But I never use a transition in the middle of the two images. Uh, but for these texts, I definitely apply transitions on both sides. And now everything should go nicely. Uh, fades in, does everything good. Scrolls through, la 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 yada. Okay, and there we go, all nice and smooth. Well, as I said before, I hope you have found this video useful. And if you have, definitely be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And any questions you may have, anything you'd like an answer to about Premiere, feel free to leave a question in the comments section, and I will do my best to either answer them or create a video on the topic. But with that, I hope you have a good rest of your day, and hopefully I will see you next time.